What do we really and actually know of Christopher Columbus? A lot of us only know what we've been taught or told by others. Some of us might even have never actually considered Christopher Columbus of any importance. I'm here to tell you that Christopher Columbus is one of the most important navigators in history. I'm about to tell you a story that you've never heard before. Before going on, I must state that I am indigenous realist to realist. I'm bringing this video to show and prove that there is so much missing from history and it's shrouded in the allegory of Freemasonry. Subscribe, like this video, share it. Those who have their own agendas won't allow this video to be up long. With that being said, I'm going straight in. Christopher Columbus is notable in common history for the so-called discovery of America. That is a complete lie that has been propagated now for over 500 years. Discover, according to etymology, means to pull back a covering or a veil. The secret of Columbus story is found in the etymology because it reveals the Americas were well known in the old world. Even though America isn't seen on most cartography maps until after 1492, there was a group of well-known men who knew of our homeland and chose to reveal the whereabouts. But that's a topic for another day. Christopher Columbus was said to be born in 1451 in the Republic of Genoa. His whole life was spent in ships learning the sea craft and ways of his ancestors who were seafaring people. Most people know nothing of Christopher Columbus' parents or ancestors, but he was actually born of mixed heritage. He was half Portuguese and half Moor. Yeah, I said it. Christopher Columbus' mother was sleeping with a tawny Moor. But moving along, Christopher Columbus was hired on as a merchant mariner in 1477 by King John II of Portugal. Gotta pause real fast to give y'all the rundown on King John II. King John II, called the perfect prince, was king of Portugal from 1481 until his death in 1495 and also for a brief time in 1477. He is known for reestablishing the power of the Portuguese monarchy, reinvigorating the Portuguese economy and renewing his country's exploration of Africa and the Orient. He participated in his father's conquest of Arzila in Morocco where he was knighted and was given a separate household at Beja in southern Portugal. In 1474 his father entrusted him with the trade of Guinea and the African explorations. When Alfonso V claimed the Castilian throne in opposition to Isabella I plunging Portugal into war, he appointed John his regent. That was in April 1475. In December 1481, he sent Diago de Azambuja to build the fortress of St. George in Mina, the gold mine near, near Benin, a powerful native kingdom in the territory of modern Nigeria. Gold currency had been restored by his father, and the new trade now doubled the royal revenues. In 1485, John assumed the title of Lord of Guinea. I have to pause right there to say that the castle in Elmina Castle is in Ghana. That Brother Polite wanted you all to remember for its purposes in the slave trade, but it has much greater purposes and memories than that. The castle wasn't even used until 1637 by the Dutch for housing slaves. But its original use was much more sinister than slavery. I'm going to let that sink in for a while, but moving on. In 1480, the sea route to Asia was established. It was the greatest discovery of Portugal at that time. They were seeking to make a trade route with Asia all the while avoiding Africa, which was already well conquered and sacked and pillaged numerous times through history. I hope everyone is keeping up with the timeline because the dates are very important and they are all relevant. The printing press was invented in 1955. I know you all are wondering what the heck does the printing press have to do with anything, right? It has a lot to do with it. The printing press was invented and as an effect, maps from all parts of the so-called old world were now available to anyone who had enough gold. See, history books won't tell you that Christopher Columbus studied cartography. Cartography being the study of maps and Christopher Columbus would go around and purchase maps at behest of King John II. Remember I said that King John II hired Christopher Columbus to be a merchant, right? Well, let's look at the etymology of merchant. See, merchant is not a new word at all. It comes from two words, mer, which means to disappear or vanish. This term was originally used as a noun describing a seafaring group of people. It also can be found present in the word marin, which means to disappear. Be on the lookout for my next video entitled What Happened to the Murder? The second word is chant, which means to celebrate or sing. 
See, merchants through history are known to be traders or barterers, but that is a misnomer. And it's not misnomered accidentally either. The real merchants were created by John II of Portugal. John summoned his assembly at Evora, November 1481, and imposed a drastic oath of obedience on his vassals. He also reasserted the Bene Placid. Notice, 1481 is also the year he established the castle fortress in Ghana. A coincidence, right? No, nah, it was not a coincidence, but there's no time for that. The oath spoken of is the exact same oath that all Freemasons must take now. Bene Placid was a mandate to withhold all information to the Pope. From the Bene Placid comes modern day censorship by way of every piece of mail being scanned and all communication monitored, etc. See, the word Mason is commonly accepted as meaning my son. We all know that, right? But how would you like to know Mason is originally drawn from mercy? My son, mer son, merchant, my son. I'll let you all figure out that one. Moving along. See, Christopher Columbus was actually an initiated Mason. He was initiated four years prior to the initiation of Portugal seamen. See, King John made it mandatory that all seafaring men under his rule became initiates. Thus comes the term vessel stemming from King John's vassal. The merchants were sent out daily to go and search for mers. He knew from his grandfather before him of the seafarers who called themselves mers. So he sent merchants out to find them or their homelands. See, MERS coined to vanish, right? Because the original MERS would sail in from all directions and state, bringing sciences and mathematics and culture until they were bored with the people and they simply vanished. No one ever knew where the MERS went. But enough about them, let's get back to Columbus. Columbus was given full access to maps and all literature of that day to find any clue that he could of the location of the fabled Merz homeland. The reason for 1481 oath was because Columbus had found a map unlike any other. A map that showed South America as a landmass that he couldn't verify on any other map. I have to pause again. Has anyone ever wondered why Christopher Columbus couldn't find North America? Or why he didn't chart North America? That's because he never knew it existed. And if you haven't thought about it, I have. And it turns out that he never even tried because he was traveling for the sole purpose of finding South America, thinking it was the home of the Mers. Sorry to everyone who thought I was going to say that the original home of Mers in their fable ancient land was America, but it is not. That's a story for another day. Christopher Columbus was under false pretenses and it showed in the way he treated the local Taino upon his arrival to the Caribbeans. He was infuriated. Upon finding the original Taino of the Caribbeans, they by description looked like Mers, but the language wasn't right and they didn't have the technology or the riches of the people he was looking for. I won't bore you with all the places he searched looking for treasures of these people, but his furious search came to an end when he crashed the Saints of Maria in modern day Haiti. He left 39 armed men in Haiti to start a colony thinking it was abandoned. He set out on another ship to go back to Spain. Did anyone catch on the fact that he sailed from Spain and not Portugal? It's because King John II was a crafty thinker. He sent Columbus to King Fernandad and Queen Isabella to get funding to find a new world. How could they deny him when he possessed a map showing a continent that no one else ever knew existed? But till the end, he was always, in fact, under oath and obligation to King John II. Christopher Columbus was a spy, people. He was sent to the king and queen of Spain for the sole purpose of making them think was their idea for him to be voyaging to the parts unknown. See, history lies to us and says that he was sent by the Spaniards to find a sea route to Asia, when in fact a sea, a sea route was established in 1480. That's why I say pay attention to the dates because the dates of most so-called history, when compared with other so-called history, will always be off. Anyway, when he returned to Spain, he was a hero because no one in that day and age had any records of sailing into the West. Not even the Asians, nor the Africans, nor the Europeans. Now, I know we all know that the Vikings came here. That's a new discovery. It wasn't known then. Plus, they landed in North America, which Christopher Columbus never knew existed. Upon his arrival to Spain, Oh, excuse me. Upon his return to Spain, they bestowed him with the most pride and praised rank and title a sailor could receive, which was admirable. You see the myrrh and admirable, right? Anyway, he brought with him to Spain chili peppers, tobacco, cotton, stuffed animals, and most importantly, he brought back kidnapped natives. The indigenous to the Americas were brought back for the king and queen to see. 
All those photos and paintings we see of black novelties in pets in Europe were not in fact Africans. They were Taino and South Americans. The first ever copper color natives was kidnapped and brought to Spain by Columbus. This is the beginning of the transatlantic slave trade. It was the original copper color natives being kidnapped and sold to Europeans as novelties. Europe has always been North Africa so they had no reason to cherish the Negro black skin race of Africa at all. No, they wanted the copper color of indigenous Amerique's. Upon seeing all the goods he brought them, Isabel and Fernandez sent him back to the Caribbeans with a total of 18 ships. 1 plus 8 equals 9. Born. Therefore, the transatlantic slave trade was born with those 18 ships. But anyway, you all know what happened next, or do you? Did you all know that when they sailed back to Haiti that the local Haitians had slaughtered his 39 armed men? Did you know that Christopher Columbus in his rage ordered the death of over 100,000 inhabitants of the island? both Haitians and Dominicans. Thanksgiving is a direct insult to our indigenous ancestors. Did you know that? Did you know that Christopher Columbus was tried and convicted for his atrocities to the Taino people? King John II is supposed to have died three years later, but he didn't actually die. He actually set sail along with Columbus after he had been banned from Spain in the old world. They both went on to find the land of the ancient Mer, which was a little more south than America. There's a lot more that is veiled that I plan on shining light on. But in the meantime, check out my other amazing videos. Subscribe. Hit that bell. Comment down below. I'm indigenous, realist, realist, and I'm gone, y'all.